Have you ever thought about what space is like? Can we see other planets? Could there be creatures besides us? Our curiosity pushes us to explore new places and try new things. With better technology, we have gone beyond Earth. Scientists keep getting more curious, so space explorers now travel to different parts of our solar system. Voyager 1, launched by NASA on September 5, 1977, was part of the Voyager program aimed at studying the outer solar system and interstellar space beyond the Sun's heliosphere. Let's delve into the details. The primary objective of Voyager 1, when it was launched to explore the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn. During this phase of its mission, Voyager 1 made a historic flyby of Jupiter in March 1979, capturing detailed images and data about the planet and its moons. One of the most significant discoveries was the active volcanoes on one of Jupiter's moons. This finding surprised scientists as they hadn't expected to find volcanic activity in the outer solar system. Voyager 1 also studied Jupiter's atmosphere, magnetosphere, and its intricate cloud patterns, providing valuable insights into the planet's composition and dynamics. After its successful exploration of Jupiter, Voyager 1 continued its journey towards Saturn, reaching the planet in November 1980. At Saturn, Voyager 1 provided groundbreaking observations of the planet's rings, revealing detailed structures and dynamics within them. It discovered gaps, braided features, and even spokes in the rings, which were unexpected at the time. Voyager 1 also studied Saturn's moons, including Titan, the largest moon, which was found to have a thick atmosphere and hydrocarbon lakes on its surface. Due to the success of its initial mission and the wealth of scientific data gathered at Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 1's mission was extended. The spacecraft's trajectory was adjusted to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment that allowed it to continue its journey out of the solar system toward interstellar space. These discoveries not only expanded our knowledge of the outer solar system, but also paved the way for future deep space exploration missions. Well, after completing its primary mission, Voyager 1 decided to go even further. It boldly went where no human-made object had gone before, interstellar space. Imagine that. In 2012, it officially left our solar system and entered this vast, uncharted territory between the stars. Now, are you thinking what is interstellar space and what's it like out there? Interstellar space is this huge area between stars in a galaxy. It's not like our solar system where planets are closer together. It's like a big open field with hardly anything in it. If you were in a spaceship there, it would be hard to move because there's not much to push against. When Voyager 1 reached interstellar space in 2012, it was a momentous occasion in space exploration. This means that Voyager 1 had traveled beyond the heliosphere, which is the region influenced by the sun's solar wind, and entered the vast expanse of interstellar space where the influence of our sun diminishes and the environment is shaped by the broader galaxy. Scientists noticed significant changes in Voyager 1's surroundings such as a sharp increase in cosmic rays originating from outside our solar system, a decrease in solar wind particles from the sun, and a shift in the orientation of the magnetic field, aligning more with the Milky Way's magnetic field. These observations provided strong evidence that Voyager 1 had indeed crossed the boundary into interstellar space. The confirmation of Voyager 1's entry into interstellar space came in September 2013, after careful analysis of the data collected by its instruments. This confirmation 
marked Voyager 1 as the first human-made object to venture into space between stars, a remarkable achievement in space exploration history. Despite being in this distant region, Voyager 1's instruments continued to operate effectively, allowing scientists to study the characteristics of interstellar space, such as the density of interstellar particles, the strength of magnetic fields, and the prevalence of cosmic rays. Voyager 1's journey into interstellar space expanded our understanding of the outer reaches of our cosmic neighborhood and paved the way for further exploration beyond our solar system. Now the question is, how far can Voyager 1 travel? In the coming years, Voyager 1 will keep traveling through interstellar space. Its tools will stay on, gathering important facts about space between stars. Even though it's far, Voyager 1 will stay in touch using the deep space network. It will send back all the cool things it learns during its trip. While it may not meet any stars or planets soon, its path will eventually lead it close to other star systems, which could lead to new discoveries. The Voyagers have enough electrical power and thruster fuel to keep its current suite of science instruments on until at least 2025. By that time, Voyager 1 will be about 13.8 billion miles, or 22.1 billion kilometers from the Sun. Voyager 1 is just cruising through space, not heading towards any specific star or planet. In about 40,000 years, it will pass close to a star called Gliese 445. That seems like a long time for us, but in space terms, it's pretty quick. Voyager 1 is now about 157.1 astronomical units AU away from the Sun, which is super far, 23.5 billion kilometers. It's actually the farthest human-made thing in the whole universe. Voyager 2 is a bit closer at 19.6 billion kilometers. For us humans, these distances are massive, but in space terms, they're kind of small. Imagine if Voyager 1 was heading for Proxima Centauri, a star near us, it would take 75,000 years to get there. Both Voyager spacecraft are still working and sending us data. Voyager 1 has a magnetometer, cosmic ray detector, charged particle detector, and plasma wave receiver that are all still doing their jobs. Voyager 2 has its plasma detector still working, plus the other tools I mentioned. Sadly, every year, their power generators make less and less energy. By 2025, they'll probably run out of power. Engineers will have to start shutting down some of the tools and eventually they won't have enough energy to talk to Earth anymore. This might happen around their 50th mission anniversary. Even after they stop talking to us, the Voyagers will keep moving in space forever. They're going so fast that they've escaped the sun's pull so they're leaving our solar system behind. They're not aiming for any star in particular, but calculations say that in about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will get about 1.6 light years close to a star named Gliese 445. Voyager 2 will come about 1.7 light years close to another star called Ross 248 in about 42,000 years.